I know you all aren't exactly enthusiastic about this mission, but... General, I believe you've read us wrong. We're delighted to be here and delighted to serve our country. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. If you're looking forward to Creature Commandos and all of the DCU, the new DCU and what it has to offer, hit that subscribe button. We're going to talk about it all the time on this channel and we have been and it's looking like it's going to be a lot of fun and I can't wait. Creature Commandos later today, later early in the morning, whatever, it's coming out. Can't wait to see it. Going to have a review on both episode one and episode two following uh, that sometime during the day. It releases 3 a.m. Eastern time. So when I watch it, I will review it uh, following that. I can't wait. I'm really, really excited to see what we're going to get from James Gunn and the birth of the DCU. It is here. We are finally at the point where we can say DC is back and it's back for a while now, right? Like substantial amount of time. This is the first time we felt this way. In a long time, because look, the DCEU, and I've been on, I love Man of Steel to death. I love Batman v Superman. I get a lot of hate for that, but I love the, a lot of those movies. And I understand the complaints, and I'm not going to get into those. But the reality is, it started off in a place with Man of Steel where it was never really meant to be a shared universe. It just kind of fell into that trap, right? This was Man of Steel was a movie where David Goyer pitched an idea to Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan said, yeah, let's go to Warner Bros. and do it. And they did it. And then from there, they're like, well, you know, Marvel has this thing happening now. And they were kind of always playing catch up. But now we got the first genuine start to a shared DC universe. And I'm very excited to see where it goes from there, where they take it, and where the mind of James Gunn creates these storylines. And of course, that all begins with Creature Commandos. And in Creature Commandos, we have David Harbour playing Frankenstein. I'm excited to see this portrayal. I love David Harbour. He's already in the MCU. I'm not really crazy about the cross-pollinating of the, the actors and actresses in these, you know, these universes. But whatever, he's voicing a character. And of course, James Gunn said, if you voice a character, you have the opportunity to play that character in live action. And he's been making his rounds on uh, for the press tour of Creature Commandos. He's had some interviews with comicbook.com, with Variety, with IGN, all these media outlets. And he said, you know, that they have kind of talked about a more, more like laid back conversations, nothing concrete. And they're playing around with the idea of, do you do it CG? Do you do it practical? What would that idea be? And, and David Harbour's like, you know, the way CG is going, he'd like to see a hybrid of the two. He mentions how that Coca the AI Coca-Cola commercial, everybody's like, hey, that's not right. Right, we all know, like our eyes are trained to kind of see certain things, and he thinks that that uh, CG and and makeup and practical effects is what works best. And I actually kind of tend to definitely agree. Anyway, David Harbour talked. To, he's been talking about Frankenstein, talking about creature, creature commandos, playing him in live action, and he also said that he took inspiration mostly from Robert De Niro's portrayal in the Kenneth Branagh movie from the '90s, which is a movie that I was like weirdly obsessed with for like a month and a half. When I was a kid, I was like, this movie is cool. And I was really obsessed with it. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I watched it. And I read the book. Frankenstein was my favorite monster, but I would read the book. Things like that. It was my favorite monster to draw. I really shouldn't say favorite monster. It was my favorite monster to draw. It was something about... Anyway, that's besides the point. So it's kind of cool. Like, he took information that. He mentioned Boris Karloff and all these iterations and what to expect. And, you know, he says that his version of the character is very fluid, obviously. And we're going to learn more about his character in the DCU uh, in, in a short amount of time. But what he did bring up, though, like, this idea of him playing him in live action, what this could mean. And even though they haven't had any concrete conversations, he said something that really stuck out to me. And that's that the DC, the way James Gunn is handling DC, and this is something James Gunn's kind of said, but this is the first time we've heard someone other than James Gunn say it, right? So this is kind of like, this is like your second reference now kind of confirming what has been said. And that's going to take a different approach than Marvel because obviously David Harbour is in Thunderbolts and he was in uh, Black Widow before that. And he kind of mentions how that, you know, they're, they're, they build towards the big team, let's build toward the big events. Whereas DC is going to have a different approach. They're going to take things a little bit smaller and work their way gradually to those event films. And they're going to focus on smaller stories. They're going to say, hey, you know what, let's focus on the character-driven stuff here and here, and we'll worry about where we get after that. So so having characters, even though, you know, we we know that Rick Flagg Sr. is going to appear in Superman and, and, and Peacemaker Season 2 and whatnot, that's not to say that they're not just going to throw them in. And it's not going to be like Nick Fury in the old ways of the MCU at the beginnings when he was like, I'm, I'm assembly, assembling a team. It's not going to be like that. And I look, the MCU, that when that was happening, was 
like that was peak. I don't know if you remember, but that wasn't that never really happened before. Like we were getting something where like something big was happening. You're like, what is going on here? They're they're folk they're 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 leading the breadcrumbs into like this a team up to the Avengers film, which obviously became a massive, massive, massive hit, and then it went on for you know a decade of massive hit after massive hit, and they couldn't fail for so long. But they have to take a different approach with DC, and I completely understand that. I think you know with with the Snyderverse stuff, the DC EU before this, as I said, they they were kind of like just kind of thrown into the shared world, and in Batman v Superman, which is a movie I just openly admitted that I enjoy, they rush in. Aquaman, Cyborg, Flash, uh, Wonder Woman, a little rush, but not as much as those guys. Like, they just kind of throw them in there. You know, like, for what purpose? Oh, because we need to have a team up. Like, so so this way they can they can kind of like, okay, you know, they can, they can see what movies, what character works, and which ones resonate with fans a lot. I mean, you don't want to go into a Swamp Thing movie and have Rick Flagg Sr. be like, I'm putting together a team, Swamp Thing. I don't think that would work. No, maybe it would. It sounds actually, you know what, Swamp Thing. <laughs> but you know, like you don't want you want to gradually move up to that. The fear that I have with this would be that fans now, movie theater movie goers, have been so conditioned for these shared universes and for everything to have a connection to the next one. That are people going to go into a movie and when it doesn't have a direct relation to you know the next one that they're watching, are they going to say, well, why did I watch that, or why am I going to go see a Sergeant Rock movie? If it's not going to have Superman and Supergirl in it, it maybe it will. I don't know what direction they're going to take it, but do you know what I mean? Like, like it's like they're in a weird spot in that the the viewing of movies has changed drastically since the birth of the MCU. The MCU changed the way we view movies. Now everything wants to be the MCU, and DC Studios is stepping back and saying, "Let's not exactly be the MCU." I think they're going to be the MCU too. A degree because that's a smart move because that's that, the MCU is a money maker obviously and then it, look the way they connected those things until Endgame especially was brilliant right because everyone was excited to see but it was also a slow burn when you think Iron Man and Thor and Captain America they were kind of isolated stories Iron Man two is when they were kind of putting a little bit too much in there there's a little too many ingredients going on for its own good uh, it's still a good movie but but. You know, the early days, that's how it was, and DC is going to be a little bit different. And I think you're going to see characters like Rick Flagg Sr. pop up here and there because his character would make sense to appear in the material he's going to appear in because of his position in and the DCU, which we'll talk about more after Creature Commandos is coming out. But so I think like that's the idea there. And you, you know, maybe you'll have this like certain characters are going to appear in a movie because the movie wants that character to appear. Right, like Jimmy. Let's just say Jimmy Olsen as an example. You need a photographer. You have Jimmy Olsen in Superman, but you need a photographer in Swamp Thing. I'm going to keep using Swamp Thing. So you're like, well, let's just have Jimmy Olsen be the photographer because it makes sense. And then that's that's what I think they're going to utilize characters that way for the beginning of this until they get their feet really wet and they move on. And James Gunn and Peter Safran, I believe, have a really sound plan on what they're doing with it. But I do think that movies are going to be pop. They're going to populate. Out of nowhere, like Sergeant Rock, we're going to say, okay, and it's going to be because somebody pitched them a movie that was probably a solid pitch, and they're going to get a script, and they're going to say, okay, this is the one we're making. And that also gives them the freedom to not worry so much about getting to the Justice League yet. Like, let's figure out who's in this before we figure out who the Justice League is. And obviously, we all know who the Justice League will be. Look, I think this is really good news. He, he said in that statement that story comes first. The storytellers, the directors, the writers, they all come first. What they want to do comes first. Character comes first. And that seems to be what David Harbour is saying here about this, about Frankenstein, like if Frankenstein doesn't make sense to appear in anything other than Creature Commandos, then why would you force that hand? I love that they're not going to force the hand creatively on throwing and shoving characters into films that they might not necessarily belong in, just because, hey, it's a shared universe. I love that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Give us a like and a subscribe. Oh, and let me know what you think of Creature Commandos. And are you excited for that, too? Thanks, everybody. Maybe the master of your own universe.